Ain't God all right? When, when, I, when, I, when I went to Easter services as, as a young boy, and my, my, my sisters, uh, they, they're my first cousin, but I, I call them my sisters. They, they like my sisters. Sister Winnerstein came up here and was singing, and, and all I could think about was, and, and, and my son Jeremy got all over into my, my sermon a little bit of my testimony because they used to, let me tell you, he, he, he talked about because he lives. He sung about, I can face that was a song that ringed in my heart in 1983 in Homer, Louisiana when I got saved. Because I had been taken to church on Easter Sunday morning. I dread it. I hate it. Because my mom was so some double knitted suits and have us all dressed just alike. All I knew was double knitted suits and I had to say a speech and I'm afraid, scared to death, but I hated it. And I had to get in front of people and all I could think about, the only way I was doing that was because that Later on, we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. And we're going to eat. And that's, the, that's what I thought Easter was all about. When I got married and I was no longer playing professional basketball, I was in Homer, Louisiana, and I was in the Valley of Indecision where to go out try for the Atlanta Hawks or try to make ends meet with my pregnant wife. Ain't God all right. But here I was in a, in a pool hall trying to shoot pool. But that song, because I was struggling because I wanted to make it. I, I wanted to have more money. I wanted to do this. I was struggling how to make it. But I didn't understand. I was trying to fix it myself. And I couldn't fix it. I tried and I tried. But that night that song came to me. Sister Laverne, Mother Laverne Dillon, every Easter she would sing that song. I was a little boy, but it came back to me and she had a high soprano voice. She would say, because he lives, I can face tomorrow and I kept hearing that song that night and I said oh no because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future in my hands. Start shaking, and I just I said, I, I don't know what my future holds. He said, but I got your future. Yo, I thought I. Since I didn't make pro, I thought life was over. Cause I know who holds the future. And it said to me, your life is worth living. Because yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know what Easter was all about. But that night, 
I found out because he got up. I need about five folk to say because he got up. I can get up. I know I'm down in the dumps right now. I know I'm going through trouble right now. But because he got up. And I was mad. I came from church and I was mad. I didn't like that old knitted, double knitted suit. And I came home, I was moping. I jumped in there and, I, and my mama said, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't like that old suit. I was ashamed of that suit you had me on. But when she said something to me, it wasn't the words of because I know. It wasn't those words. She said, I got your future. After she get too, got too welling on me, I wish I had some help here. She didn't use them words that was in that song, too. She said, I'm going to whoop your aspen. Can I get a witness in here? I didn't say no bad word. I said aspirin. Take one for your headache. Ain't God all right? Yes, yes, yes. I didn't understand what this was all about, but I, I know. You know the reason why I praise him like I praise him? Because he got up. The reason why I'm here this morning is because he got up. The reason why I wave my hand is because I can't do what I do unless he had God. I do what I do because he got. I need about five folks said since he got up, I can get up. Yes. And as we look at this, let's talk about the stone. There was a stone in front of the tomb. Here come Mary, Magdalene, another Mary, they're coming to the tomb. Here they are looking to come to the tomb and anoint his body, spices and stuff, and do something just to come and see about Jesus. You know the reason why I think she came? Because she was bought in. The reason why I'm here this morning, I'm bought in. I don't know why you're here, but I hope it's because you, you sold out. I made up in my mind that I'm bought in with this thing. Mary Magdalene, because he cast seven devils out of her. She loved Jesus. The one that he walked with every day and talked with every day, they were somewhere shut up in a room. But the one he delivered she was going to see her Jesus because she loved him. I stopped by to ask somebody, are you here this morning because you love him? But guess what? Even if you don't love him, it's a good thing you're here because he loved you. He, he loved you so much despite of what you do, he looked beyond your faults. He didn't just die for me. He died for every single person in this room. Not only in this room, but for the entire world. He got up so that I can get up. I can get up in my thinking. I can get up in my mind. I can get up in my life. I can get up in whatever I do. I can get up. Don't let the devil tell you you can't get up. He can knock you down, but you can get up. He can't knock you out. I'm knocked down, but I'm not knocked out. Paul said, though we're knocked down, but we're not utterly cast away. Do you not know you're not cast away? Even though you're down sometimes, God hadn't cast you away. He loves you so much, even though you've had some setbacks during the year, he's saying to you right now, you are my child. And I'm speaking to every person in this building. He says, you are mine. You've been bought with a price. I purchase you. I purchase you with my precious blood. I shed my blood just for you. 
I died just for you. I got up so you can get up. Somebody tell him thank you. Here they are. They're going there and they, in their mind, they are very, very disappointed. They are very, very upset. They're very, very disillusioned. They are thinking we loved him so much and they killed him. Have you ever had something in your life that you had and you thought, I had it, but now it's gone? Thank God, all right. They're going there. But what happens is there's a stone in front of the grave. A stone. Somebody said stone, stone. And do you not know there's some stones of discouragement? They are discouraging. There's a stone there. And this stone wasn't put there for Jesus not to get out. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. This was from, from, my, from my revelation and knowledge of what. The stone was not there for Jesus because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus can get out. That stone can't stop him. You know the reason why I know the stone can't stop him? Because Peter said his soul had went down to hell and preached to those folks. <sighs> then he come back this, and he got back in his body and then walked out through the stone. I, 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 can, I, can I preach to somebody here? He went down to hell. He didn't come out that way. He went down to hell out of that body and came back and walked out. The stone wasn't to hold him. The stone was there to keep you from coming in. There's some stones in our lives right now stopping us from getting into Jesus. There's a stone of discouragement. You know the reason why I know there's a stone of discouragement? When, when, when people start talking in past tense. <sighs> when you start talking in past tense, like, the, like the, 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 the two men that was walking on that road down to Emmaus after the crucifixion, here they are on that road to Emmaus. Oh, yes. They're discouraged. Luke 24 and 21. It says... But we trusted that he had been, he, he, he would have been the one. We, we trusted that he was going to be the savior. We trusted that he was going to be the king of kings and lords. We, tried, we should have redeemed Israel. He was going to redeem Israel. And now, but beside all this, today is the third day since these things done. Now we thought he was going to be the one. Now it's the third day. He gone. Have you ever got discouraged? Because you had something you thought was going to happen a certain way. It didn't happen the way you thought it was going to happen. It did not happen the way they thought it was going to happen. And since now they're discouraged. They said we thought he was the one. Now it's third day. He's dead. That was our hope. That was my breakthrough. That was my future. That was the one I love. That, I thought he was going to be the king to set up his kingdom. And, and yet here we are. We're not going to be on this Roman government. We're not going to be ruled on this authority. We thought he was the Messiah. But he'd been dead three days. Have you ever went through something and it didn't come through? Preacher preached to you and said, it's going to be all right. A month passed by, it didn't come through. A year passed by, it didn't come through. Come on. You get discouraged, and that's a stone in your life. And then you get so discouraged, you start saying, it ain't going to happen. So I got to drag this stone around with me. Ain't God all right? Then they were wondering, who going to move the stone? When we get there, who going to roll the stone away? In, in our lives sometimes we try to figure out we try to move the stone ourselves you're trying to move the stone you can't move it that's why the songwriter said turn it over to Jesus he can I said turn it over to how many know he got angels that to move the stone for you Whatever is going on in your life, there's a stone in your life, there's discouragement, whatever that stone is in your life, you have to give it over to Jesus. You got disappointment, you got hurt, don't you try to move it yourself. 
said, Jesus, I cast all my cares upon you, for you care for me. How many know he cares for you? We wouldn't be here this morning on this Easter Sunday morning if he didn't care for you. He cares for you, you and you. Don't be discouraged. Yes, yes, there's a stone of dread. How many of you ever been in a position where you dread something? These disciples in, in John 20, 19, they, they dread it. They dread it. They went and locked themselves up. Then the same day at evening, being that first day of the week, when the doors were shut, disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They dreaded. it. How many have been afraid of rejection? You won't even, you won't even testify to somebody about Jesus because you're afraid they're going to say, girl, what you talking about? Afraid of rejection. When I was in high school, I felt insecure. Yeah, I was looking at some girls because I'm a man. I was looking at them, but I was scared to say anything to them. You know what? why? I was afraid they're going to tell me, I don't want you. I never wanted nobody to say, I don't want you. I got enough problems myself. I'm already in a bad social economical background and now I'm looking at a girl that I feel like better than me and I'm afraid to say anything to them because I was afraid of there's some people right now and we're living life and we're afraid of they dread it coming out of the room you've been with Jesus all this time but now you're scared you're locked up in a room you're afraid to go out and say we know him because you're scared that the Pharisees are going to reject you. Can I, can I preach in here today? The Pharisees are out there and the Pharisees are going to kill us. If we go out here and praise God, if I go to church, then I'm going to be rejected. If I get up and raise my hand, the folks I know are going to say, oh, you acting like them folks. Some folks scared to praise God in church. They're afraid to lift their hands. They're afraid to say, yes, Lord, because they're worried about what somebody else thinks. Girl, you can't come back to the hair shop. I saw you up there acting like sister hair, girl. Oh, I feel like preaching now. Ain't God all right? You, 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 you got to get to the point to where you got to get that stone out of your life. There's some stone blocking you from getting to Jesus. The reason why you can't get your blessing, you got that stone of rejection in your life and you can't see him because of that stone. Then there's a stone of doubt. There's somebody in here, you here, but you still don't believe he's alive. You wondering, I wonder if that's a fantasy. I wonder if Jesus really rose. Because I be hearing these folk be talking, saying, they just talking, he was just a man. Uh-oh, it's quiet now. I wonder if I die. Is it real or not? <laughs> Judas! Look, 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 look at John 20, 24 to 25. Look, Thomas, one of the 12, Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Hey, there's a lot of folks weren't with you when Jesus came in your life. See, you weren't with me that night Jesus came. Say, well, Pastor Hal, how you know he rose? How you know he died? You weren't at that cross that day. No, I wasn't. I wasn't on God God to that day. But one Thursday night in 1983, I saw him. I saw him when he said, come unto me. Oh, you that labor. 
and heavy laden, I give you rest. One Thursday night, I saw him say, I bruised for your iniquities. Chastisement of peace was on me. And with my stripes, you heal. I saw him. I went at the cross, but I saw him. One Thursday night, saying, don't your sins be as scarlet. I will watch them white as snow. I saw him. Said, even though the world that had you bound and had you in captivity, but I come to lead you captive. Ain't God all right? I'm breaking every yoke that was in your life that the world had put on you and you thought you had to live the way the world said live. But I, I heard him say in John in 10 and 10, that night, the thief coming to kill you, Hilton, to steal you and destroy you. But I come that you may have life. Not only life, but have it more abundantly. I come to give you abundant life. I dare you to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, he give you abundant life. <laughs> then you got to watch it. There's a stone there. There's a stone, my brothers and sisters, of defeat. You can live a defeated life if you don't watch yourself. That stone of defeat would mess you up. Here's Peter, here's Peter, been with Jesus all this time. But here on that night that Jesus was betrayed, Peter sat here and denied him. They asked him I'm, a, a couple of times, about three times, and he still cussed the third time. Said some of them choice words, y'all know how to say. Ain't God all right? I don't know him. I ain't got nothing to do with him. Now he feel bad. Ain't nothing wrong. We've all made mistakes. We've all got to the point where we got defeated and said some things we didn't want to say. You know, when you're in defeat, you'll say things you ain't got no business saying. I, I, I saw a game last night when the coaches started acting up. When you're when you losing, you're going you gonna, you gonna to say something you ain't got no business saying. The best thing is to close your mouth and take it like a man. <laughs> you get beat, you just beat. And if you get yourself up to find a way to go down there and shake them folks' hands. That's the tough part when you gotta shake somebody's hand and you know you've whooped. Ain't God all right? It is. It's, it, it, Peter is defeated because he has denied Jesus. Now he, he's living a defeated life. Now he goes and he says, you know what I'm gonna do? Since I feel defeated, I'm gonna go back and start doing what I used to do. You know, when you get defeated, you will start going back to doing what you used to do. When you feel defeated, you might defeat it, but in your mind, you have thought that you're defeated. The devil got you thinking you're defeated. You are not defeated. So he goes and he says, I tell you what, I'm going back fishing. I'm just going to go back what I know. I'm going back to what I know. Peter went back fishing. He done denied Jesus. He done got away from him. Now he's going back fishing. But now here Jesus shows up on the boat. And said, Peter, what you catch? Peter said, we've been fishing all night long. And we ain't caught nothing. Ain't God all right? How many know when you feel defeated, Jesus can show up? You know why he'll show up? Because he's your, you, you, you belong to him. He shows up and he tells Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? He asked him one time, and then he asked him a second time, Peter, do you love me? He asked him a third time. He said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, I do. He said, well, go feed my sheep. 
Why are you living defeated if you love me? Why are you walking around with your head down if you love me? Why, why are you come to church and can't praise me if you love me? Why, 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 why you quit the choir if you love me? Why you quit church if you love me? Why are you talking about folk if you love me? Why are you acting like you act if you, if you love me? Oh, y'all quiet now. If you love me, you're going to do. You're going to feed my sheep. If you love me, you're going to start working for me. If you love me, ain't nobody got to call you. You're going to show up on time. If you love me, you're going to be on duty on time. If you love me, you're going to take your responsibility of whatever ministry you're in. You're going to work as hard as you possibly can. Because you're not working for Pastor Hare. You're working for him. Somebody shout glory. Then... Next, the stone that's got to be moved, the stone of death. Somebody said stone of death. Because I tell you, everybody in here fear right now. If you're going to have an accident, that's 1.475 that you'll die in an accident. Some other things, 1.400, you die in this or that. But it's 1.1, 1 .1, you're going to die. 1.1, 1 .1, you're going to die. Every person in here, I don't, I don't throw no damp on the service. You're going to die. But one thing about it, you don't have to fear death. Because he got up. I can get up. Though this earth of the tabernacle be dissolved, I got another building. Not made by the hands of man. Because he got, since he got up, I don't have to fear death. He took the power, the stain out of death. The victory was given to Jesus. That's why we're here today, because he got up. We got a hope because he got, we got hope because he got, Somebody say he got up. Ain't God all right? First Peter 3 and 18 to 20. Last thing I got to leave with you, I'm free. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm free. The Bible said, for Christ also had once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, made alive by the Spirit. Then put to death, but made alive by the Spirit. Somebody say, I'm free. Amen. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6 says, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with Christ by grace. Somebody said, by grace, you say. I'm so glad about grace. Somebody said, I'm glad about it. He got up. And by grace, I'm saved. Is that right? He got up. You know he got up, wave your hand. and Say, by grace, I'm saved. And not by my works, but it's a gift from God. How many know he gave me a gift? And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about the gift. He gave me a gift. He gave me eternal life. If I choose it. If I don't choose it, I can lose it. Can I get a witness here? But I'm so glad I got a choice today. If I want to live forever, all I got to do is put my hand in God's hand and everything will be all right. All I got to realize as he got up, and I pick myself up and say, for God I live, and for God I die, and for God I stand up and testify, because he's been good to me. Is it anybody in here know that God is a real God, and that Jesus is alive, and that he got out of the grave? Somebody tell the Lord, thank you.
Because 1 Corinthians 15 and 27 says the word, 16 and 57 says the word. Uh, but thanks be to God. I want to just lift my hand and say thanks be to God which give us the victory. I don't know about you, but I got victory. I got victory over all my problems. Who give us a victory through Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I woke up this morning with my mind on Jesus. I went to bed last night. I had my mind on Jesus. I came to church this morning with my mind on Jesus. Well, Pastor Hal, why did you have your mind on Jesus? Because he got up. He got up. And I got my mind stayed on him because Jesus got up. Kind of wave your hand if you know he's all right. Ain't God all right? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I want to tell you he went down in hell when he died. He went to hell and he preached to the soul down in hell. Oh, when he came out, he said, all power. Somebody shout all power. When he came out, he said, all power. All power. All power is in my hand. Kind of wave your hand and tell him he got up. Since he got up, the stone is rolled away. Since he got up, my sins been washed away. Since he got up, I got joy, unspeakable joy. Since he got up, ain't God all right? Oh, I can walk over, red over scorpion. Since he got up, Ain't God all right? By his stripes, I am healed. If you sick today, because he got up, he healed your body. He healed your body. If you having discouragement, he got up. You don't have to be discouraged because he got up. You don't have to be walking around with your head hanging down. He got up so you can have peace of mind. Whatever you're going through, he got up. Somebody say he got up. He got up. How you know he got up? He got up in my soul. Oh, Lord. Kind of wave your hand. Tell the Lord thank you. Tell him thank you right now. If you know he got up in your life, grab your neighbor by the hand. Say, neighbor, neighbor, since he got up, signs and wonders ought to be following your life. Since he got up, you got a blessing coming your way. Since he got up, God got some miracles coming your way. Somebody say, yeah. Somebody say yeah, somebody say yeah, ain't he all right, ain't he all right, ain't he all right, ain't he all right. I heard Thomas say, I won't believe it unless I feel the nail scars in his hand, but I got to tell Thomas, I ain't got to feel it, I feel it down in my soul. I feel it in my soul. He got up. Gotta wave your hand. If you know he got up, gotta jump up and down. Say, he got up. Tell the Lord thank you right now. Tell him thank you. He got up. He got up. We can get up. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me because he got up. And I want you today to put, a, put, put whatever you want to put in there. I can do. 
would say all things just like a blank check. Whatever you need, put it right there. I can do. He didn't say some things. So that's a blank check. Whatever you want to write in there, write it in. I can do. But what is the thing that you want done in your life? I want to talk to somebody today. What is the thing that you want done in your life? Put it right there. I can do. I can be. I can overcome. Because he did it just for me. He got up. Lift your hands to heaven right where you are. Everyone standing to your feet. Everyone standing to your feet. This, this is a day on an Easter Sunday. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ is need to manifest itself all through the sanctuary in your life because there's some stones and stuff in our lives that need to be moved so we can get into the presence of God. The devil will try to hinder you from getting into that presence. But the Bible said when you died, that the, the veil and the temple was rent from top to bottom. So he said, now you can come in to the Holy of Holies. No, have, you don't have to sit outside and have a priest to pray for you. You can pray for yourself. You can, you can go in and pray for yourself. Somebody lift your hands to heaven today on this Easter Sunday. This, this is a day where I know we have communion all the time, but this is a day of restoration, recommitment, dedicating yourself, rededicating yourself, committing yourself to God. Father in heaven, as we, we, we come right now, we, we come not in our own strength, not in our own might, but we come in the strength and the power and might of the name Jesus. It is this day that we celebrate your son's resurrection. It is this day that he, that we believe that he resurrected them, brought newness of life to all of us. We were predestined for hell, the second death, but he defeated that just for us. And Lord, we thank you right now. And we give ourselves away to you so you can use us. I give myself away. Every person in this building, if you don't know him, you need to accept me. If you do know him, say, I want to get closer to you. I want to be closer than I've ever been. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear you leading and guiding me. I want to hear what you're saying in this, these last days. God, if you're moving in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.